Question six on the final exam comes from section 2.3, previously tested on exam three, number four. A uh, student will be able to describe the in behavior of polynomial functions uh, by leading coefficient test using limits. First question says, describe the in behavior of the polynomial function using limits. Well, the in behavior of a polynomial function is all controlled by this leading term. Uh, what we're looking for are two things. We want to know that the degree is odd. Odd versus even would behave differently. And we need to know that the leading coefficient is negative. Okay, if we know those two things, uh, that should be enough to know what the in behavior of this function is. Um, so if I were to set up a graph What does odd and negative tell me about the shape of this graph? Well, if it's odd and negative, it tells me that it's going to rise on the left and it's going to do some stuff in the middle. We don't know what exactly. And it's going to go down on the right. So that would be the in behavior for all odd and negative functions. Now, describing this using limits, this in behavior. I would say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals infinity. So that's saying as I'm going to the left, function is going up. And this in behavior is the limit as x approaches positive infinity, that's positive infinity, so going to the right of f of x equals negative infinity as it's coming down. So there's our two limit statements that we want for this functions in behavior. On this next one again we're looking at the first term of this polynomial function. So we see that on this first term that the degree is even and that the leading coefficient is positive. So even and positive. All polynomial functions that are even and positive have the same end behavior. And their end behavior is this. It's going to go up on the left. can do all sorts of stuff here. And it's going to go up on the right. Of course, that's not this particular function, but the end behavior is. It's going to go up on the left, up on the right. Um, if you wanted an exact picture of this function, then you could use your graphing calculator going to the y equals screen. You could type this in and graph it, and you could see for yourself what the in behavior was. So if you have forgotten this leading coefficient test, you could use your calculator still to help you answer this question. All right, this in behavior is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals infinity. And this in behavior is the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x equals positive infinity. So whether you're going left or right, both ends are going towards positive infinity. Seven on the Question seven on the final exam comes from section P5. It was previously tested on exam one, numbers 5a and 5b. Uh, this particular question is gonna test if you can solve quadratic equations. And with quadratic equations, we have a variety of methods like factoring, square roots, completing the square, quadratic formula. Um, so you need to know um, probably all these techniques, and then when is it best to use each of these techniques for this particular question. So the directions say solve the quadratic equation using any technique. The first thing I do with all quadratic equations is I make them equal to zero. Once it equals zero, now I can examine it and determine if it can factor. Okay, so can we multiply two numbers to negative 20 and add those numbers to eight? And the answer is yes, if we use positive 10 and negative two. 
So we take this factor, set equal to zero, the solution is negative 10. We set this one set equal to zero, the solution is positive two, and that's finished. Next question, the quadratic equation is already set equal to zero, so I can begin to see if this factors. This one, because of the 2x squared, we're going to have to use 2x times x. Um, we're multiplying to 2, that's only 2 and 1. Remember that whatever number you place in this spot right here, it's going to get multiplied by 2. Okay, So if I'm using 2 times 1, if I place the 2 here, that 2 is really a 4. So now I'm looking at 4 and 1. And do 4 and 1 have a sum of 5? And the answer is yes, they do. So I'm putting the 2 here because it's really a 4. And I'm putting the 1 here, 2x plus 1, x plus 2. This one, solve for x, I get 2x equals negative 1. So x equals the fraction negative 1 half. This one, we subtract the 2, get x equals negative 2. Okay, this last one is already set equal to 0. Um, I've thought about it already, and I don't think that I can factor this one. If I can't factor it, one way to do it is to use the quadratic formula. So here's the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. If you do not know that quadratic formula and want to use it on the final, you need to put it on your note card to use. Okay, so applying that to this problem gives us x equals negative 2 plus minus square root of 4, and then we're going to have 4 times 3 times 9 Let's see, I'm going to cheat and use the calculator. Becomes plus 108 all over 6. Get negative 2 plus minus square root of 112 divided by 6. 112 divides by 16, I think it does. So this is x equals negative 2 plus minus the square root of 4, square root 7, over 6. And we'll finish right here. The 2, the 4, the 6 all divide by 2, so negative 1 plus minus 2, square root 7, over 3. Next question comes from section 2.5, previously taught on exam 2, numbers 2 and 6. Uh, this particular question is going to test whether you know the, the relationship between zeros and factors of polynomial functions. Directions ask you to write the polynomial function with given zeros in factored form. So we need a polynomial function uh, in factored form, there are three zeros, so there will be three factors. If positive 5 is the zero, then x minus 5 is the factor. The positive 2 is x minus 2, and the negative 4 is x plus 4. That is factored form, so you do not need to multiply. Okay. That's as far as we need to go on the final exam because, again, I'm just testing that relationship between zeros and factors. And do you understand that? The next example of the same directions, write the polynomial function with given zeros in factored form. So we've got a positive 2, which is an x minus 2 factor, a negative 1, which is an x plus 1 factor. And here's the tricky part. The Factor 3i actually hides, an, or the 0 3i, sorry, actually hides another 
factor, or another zero, of negative 3i. So we actually have x minus 3i and x plus 3i. Now I don't know yet because I don't recall on the final exam uh, which type, either question A or question B, this is going to be. But if I had this, I'm guessing I would probably want you to put these two together as x squared plus 9. And the rest of this is all okay. And that's finished. Question 9 on the final exam comes from section 3.1. It's not previously been tested. A student will be able to understand real life situations when logistic growth functions are used to model populations. Students will be able to evaluate logistic functions. That's kind of the, the big part of this is evaluating logistic functions correctly. This problem says a virus is accidentally brought into a remote village with a population of 8,000 that has never been exposed to the disease. The spread of the virus is given by the model below where T is the time in days since the virus was introduced. And here's the function that models um, the spread of the virus. It is a logistic growth function. Question A, how many have been infected with the virus after five days? So you want to know the population of infected people after five days. So we are simply replacing the T with five. That's 8,000 over 1 plus 90 e to the negative 0.22 times 5. Okay, so this is all calculator work from here. I'm going to type this in. I have 258.4 people. So probably 259 people. You can't have 0.4 people. Um, I did make sure when you do this, I did make sure to put parentheses right here on my calculator so order of operations was followed correctly. Question B, how many have been infected with the virus after 10 days? So P of 10, 8,000 times 1 plus 90E raised to the negative 0.22 times 10. Correct answer here, P of 10 is 729.1 people. Question C, how many have been infected with the virus after 20 days? So P of 20 equals 8,000 times 1 plus 90 E to the negative 0.22 times 20 Again, we're going with calculator work here. And I get uh, after 20 days, 3,800.5 people. So 3,800 people, nearly half, have been infected after 20 days. Question 10 on the final exam comes from section P.3 was previously tested on exam one, question number seven. And on this question, we are testing whether you can solve compound inequalities and express solutions in interval notation. So first question, solve the inequality and express the solution in interval notation. I begin by minusing 9 from both ends. So we get negative 21 is less than 3x is less than 7. Divide by 3. Get negative 7 is less than x is less than 7 thirds. So we want all x values that are between negative 7 and 7 thirds. Rounded parentheses because we are not equal to on the inequalities. This next question I begin by multiplying the whole thing by 2 gives me negative 10 is less than or equal to x plus 3, which is less than 14. Subtract 3. So 
we get negative 13 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 11. So I want all of the x's that are between thir negative 13 and 11. We want equal to the negative 13, so square, rounded on the 11.